Um, <clears throat> the king was uh, increasingly annoyed uh, in this episode and drunk. Um, and I get it. You're at a party. You're trying to just relax. You're trying to not think of whatever is bothering you. But yet, it seemed like every five minutes, people just kept coming up to him trying to just give give uh, the king unsolicited advice. Whether it's like, you know, when you're going to name um, Aegon as your heir. Um, <clears throat> are you going to, um, you know, who are you going to uh, have uh, Rhaenyra's marry? You know, just all type of stuff. And it was like, damn, bro, can I just chill and drink my wine in peace and just celebrate this hunt um, occasion that we got going on? Hey, what's going on, folks? Another episode of Just My Opinion with Ryan. And we just finished watching House of the Dragon, episode three. And the way this episode started, you could definitely see that some time has passed by. Um, the the uh, Prince Damon and and uh, Lord Corliss, they have went ahead and, you know, try to, you know, end this war with uh, crab, uh, the crab feeders and so forth. And, you know, I believe it's like, what, maybe three, four years has passed. So a lot has happened. Um, as, as I said, uh, the, this war is going on with the Stepstones. It's not looking good for um, uh, Damon and, and Corliss for the, for the most part. Um, and in other news, uh, King Viserys has a son. And uh, Rhaenyris is, you know, salty for good reasons. I felt like she was salty throughout the majority of the episode for a number of reasons. One, you can tell that she still is, you know, kind of... Yeah, you know, kind of shaded towards her, her homegirl, Allison. Granted, I get it, but that seems like something she got to take up with, with Viserys, not necessarily um, Allison. But anyway, um, that was quite interesting. Um, and I, 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 the reason why I think I understand where, where Rhaenyra's is coming from is because it's like she's having an attitude because she just she feels like it's only a matter of time before... Um, um, Aegon, um, the uh, newborn, or not newborn, I believe he's like two, um, is, is named heir. She feels like it's a matter of time, but um, to our surprise, uh, he, Aegon has not been named heir yet, although the everybody and a mama in this episode just feels like they just assume that Aegon will be named um, now king. And I did, you know, one of the things I did enjoy um, about this episode, well, let me walk it back a little bit. Maybe not enjoy, but one of the things I find interesting, you, it's, it's two episodes in a row now. You definitely see this, you know, this um, struggle, not struggle, but you just see like this strained relationship between uh, father and daughter, you know, Rhaenyris and, um, and, and Viserys. Um, and this episode was no different. Um, one of the main things that kind of kick-started the, um, the, the, I guess you could say the dislike for one another in this episode. Um, you know, once again, this is outside of the fact that, you know, you married my homegirl. But um, <clears throat> we actually get introduced to uh, um, the Lannisters uh, in this episode. And this particular Lannister um, was trying to make small talk and all friendly and so forth. And what do you know? He tries to shoot a shot at Rhaenyra. And um, of course, she put two and two together and realized that uh, Viserys tried to play matchmaker. Go figure, right? So that really got her nerves, clearly. Um, it was just definitely a moody episode. As I mentioned, uh, uh, Rhaenyra was acting um, moody throughout this whole episode. Um, and, and Viserys, if anything, he definitely was acting kind of, you know, definitely annoyed, which I can understand. I mean, granted, he's the king. You'd think he had a little bit more poet poise. But um, if I'm at uh, this hunting event, um, I believe they called it, um, you know, Don't Kill Me. I believe it's synonymous with birthday. But this was the, um, what was it called? The second name day of Aegon. Uh, and in, in, in tradition, they want to do a hunt. They try to hunt like a white deer or whatever. But anyway, um, <clears throat> the king was uh, increasingly annoyed uh, in this episode and drunk. Um, 
And I get it. You're at a party. You're trying to just relax. You're trying to not think of whatever is bothering you. But yet, it seemed like every five minutes, people just kept coming up to him trying to just give give uh, the king unsolicited advice. Whether it's like, you know, when you're going to name um, Aegon as your heir. Um, <clears throat> are you going to, um, you know, who are you going to uh, have uh, Rhaenyra's marry? You know, just all type of stuff. And it was like, damn, bro, can I just chill and drink my wine in peace and just celebrate this hunt um, occasion that we got going on? So I definitely understand that. And you wouldn't, you don't have to be king to be to be annoyed by something like that. You would just be chilling at a at a party today, and, and someone just keeps coming at you about work. Like, hey, man, um, you get the you get the memo from last week, and it's like, fam, I'm at a party trying to catch a buzz. Leave me the hell alone. So yeah, I definitely get it. I did like the one point you have uh, Sir Kristen Cole and Rhaenyra's. They go do their own thing. You know, nothing romantic. You know, it just seems like they they just cool. They tight. Um, wouldn't be surprised if they end up getting together somewhere along the season. It's definitely don't think it's a hot take or, or anything. But you know, they end up uh, killing a um, killing um, a wild boar together. That has to bring some type of bonding experience. Um, uh, Kristen Cole gave delivered the first blow. Um, you know, if you and if you see it, the 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 boar played dead a little bit, and then um, you know. Good old uh, Rhaenyra's finished it off. Um, just to backpedal a little bit, I did like, well, not like, you definitely saw that Viserys definitely saw his, um, he kind of regretted trying to um, put his daughter on with uh, uh, John Lannister. Um, uh, very quickly, you definitely see how quickly annoyed uh, Viserys became uh, by, by Lannister's presence and comments and so forth. And it just got, it was almost just like some preppy kid just continually to put their foot in their put foot in their mouth. So um, he definitely came with like a like a gift offering, like a, a spear or something for the occasion of the hunt. And it just got, you know, increasingly worse from there for uh, Lannister trying to make a good impression. Um, you know, other things that, that went on about this episode was definitely the. Um, Otto Hightower trying to put a, a bug in his daughter's ear, Alicent, who's married to the king, about trying to, you know, eventually persuade him to make uh, Aegon um, the, the heir instead of um, instead of uh, Rhaenyra's. And um, that's the thing. It's like she still has this attitude with the king. Once again, it's, it's not like I don't understand. But, you know, at the end, he did promise her, like, you know, I'm not going, I, I'm not going to replace you. You're, you're going to be my heir, you know? And so I feel like, I feel like when you get an announcement like that, you would think maybe, you know, Rhaenyra's would kind of let up a little bit and in terms of her attitude. So uh, as I mentioned in the beginning, the war um, against um, the, the Stepstones and the, and the Crab Feeder was tougher than expected. Um, they're actually getting their ass bust and they got a dragon and still getting their ass bust. But, um, what do you know it? Um, there's nothing, you know, for some people, not saying this for me personally, but for some people, there's nothing more inspiring than just, I guess, being, having some type of hate or, or um, uh, anger towards someone or, um, or just discon even discontent. Um, and what I mean by that, uh, one of the reoccurring uh, messages that, that the king received was how he needs to send aids because of the mess that... Um, that because of the mess that Damon and Corlys are making over there at the Stepstones. Uh, all it took was for Damon to read the letter, whoop the messenger's ass, even though, you, you know, you hear the saying, don't kill the messenger. And you know what? He volunteered to do the uh, false white flag surrender uh, just to lure everybody out of their caves. And before you know it, um, the uh, 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 Damon just... I don't know. Well, not I don't know. Okay, he was a, a skilled fighter, but he came. He became like the 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 John Wick of House of the Dragon. He is running through, slicing up everybody. This and the third. And um, one thing I thought was a little little suspect, like it was raining arrows, raining arrows. And yes, he did get hit, but I felt like he could have got hit much sooner. I mean, because it was yeah, it was just like a flash flood of just arrows coming from the sky, but. You know, like I said, it was it, it is fictional, and hey, 
he at least got tagged a couple times towards the end. So I, I, I can believe it. And I did think it was kind of dope, you know, uh, in, in just uh, Game of Thrones f fashion. When you have a fight, you got to give him the blood and gore and so forth. <clears throat> and what you know, the sign of victory is when um, Damon cuts the crab feeder in half and brings him out of the cave. Thought that was just a cherry on top of the ending. And it was dope, man. Um, I'm loving it. Um, I, I, am, I am digging it so far. I'm looking forward to seeing what else has happened. Um, which was, uh, definitely that, that, that note to give, uh, Damon, whatever inspiration he need came just in time. Because before that, we definitely see how, um, Corliss's brother was kind of, um, blaming, um, blaming Damon for why they even losing the war in the first place. People getting, you know, just increasingly frustrated because they lose in and so forth. So that that letter was definitely the you know inspiration for quite the turn of events. Once again, I thought it was a cherry on top um, to end that episode, and uh, that's what we got. I am looking forward to the rest of everything. I see how everything else goes. Um, oh, I am so sorry. And one of the other things that we we, are, we do get introduced to um, Corliss's son, uh, Lenore, who is or Lenore. I know I might be butchering it. Please don't kill me. But he is, um, you know, brought into conversation as a potential um, match for for Rhaenyra's. And so they could build a kingdom together. So we'll see how that goes. Um, I'm digging the show. Let me know your thoughts about the show if you come across this video. Um, and don't forget to like and hit that subscribe button. And love it or hate it, folks. These are just my opinions. Peace. Mm -hmm.